Hey friends, quick tutorial today to make this complex animated line graph. One thing to note, you're going to need the anti-static toolbox. You can download it for free by using the link in the description. This is a script panel with 25 tools to make your life easier in After Effects. You can check out this link in the video to learn more about that. All right, let's get started. All right, so here in After Effects, I'm going to create a new composition and make it 1920 by 1080. And then let's create a new shape layer by double clicking on the square up here. We're going to unhook these parameters and change this to 10 by 10. And we'll just change the stroke color to white for now. Now before we move on, I want to just open up the, prop the position property and let's right click on this and separate dimensions. We're going to want this to bounce only in the Y direction. So let's have these separated. It'll be helpful. Now I'm going to rename this to point one and maybe set the label color to yellow something really bright because we're going to refer to this several times all right now if i select that and go into our canvas tools we're going to duplicate out a grid and make it 41 let's ununify this and make the row count just one and make the gap 45. All right, now if we select all of those layers, and then I'm going to Command or Control click on the Y position, and we're going to the Utilities and create a Wiggle Manager. Now we just have these wiggling squares. Great, so let's go ahead and select all of those by selecting the label group, yellow, and we'll create a Stringer object by, by checking existing points and then hitting the button. Now we have a little line graph. Down at the bottom of our composition is our first stringer object. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop the opacity of this down a little bit, maybe to 40. Then we're going to create another string. So I'm going to select all these points again. This time, I just want to have every fourth box selected. So I'm going to go into the timeline tools over here. And in our zebra deselect, I'm going to change this to skip three layers push this button and you can see it's going to work through all of our layers deselecting three. Now we can go back up into our utilities. This time we're going to check on Bezier and hit stringer again. It's going to create another line for us. This time with these in and out tangents. I'm going to grab all of those and just move these points over to the left a little bit. So it's kind of in between what our two previous points were. I'm going to our Wiggle Manager, and I'll just bump this up a little bit so that we can see kind of what's happening here. All right, so now we've created a nice curvy line that's kind of like an average of every four points. All right, let's go ahead and go down to the bottom, pick our second stringer object, and this one we're going to change the color to uh, some kind of blue. All right, good. Let's do that again. Select all of our yellow layers. And we create another stringer, this time uncheck Bezier. Uh, no, you know what? I'm going to also deselect three, every three layers. And then I'm going to create another stringer. And this time uh, we're going to open this up, open the content properties, find the stroke, and we're going to add a dash in here. And turn that dash down to something pretty small, like four. So now we have a dashed line in there. And then let's just change the color of this to a darker gray. I want this one to be pretty subtle. So now I'm going to do one more thing. I want to create a box that kind of uh, shows the background of this whole chart. So what I'm going to do is take this last point and duplicate it. Put it to the bottom and label it just purple for now. Go up to our stack and take the first point and duplicate it and label it purple. Now I'm going to open up the position and option click on the Y position to remove that wiggle expression. Same thing down here. All right, I don't want either of these to move. Now if I just grab that label group and we're going to just move these down a few pixels. Now I'm going to grab all of these points, including the new ones that we just created, and go into our utilities, 
and in our stringer this time I'm going to check closed. And now we've got an outline of our whole box. I'm going to open up this, go into the contents here, in this group, and add a fill. We can probably turn off that stroke. And let's change this fill to a more subtle color. Something kind of deep blue like that. Add a Venetian blinds. And set the transition to 50. And the direction to minus 45. And the width to 10, maybe. All right, then we'll take this bottom, this top stringer object. We're going to move it down to the bottom just so it's out of the way. And we might just drop the opacity of that. I want it to be really subtle. And then we can go ahead and grab these two purple points and it's going to turn them off so they're not visible anymore. All right, let's go back up to our wiggle manager. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Probably turn the speed down to one time per second and maybe turn down the position wiggle amount. And then we can just select these points I'm going to solo them because I want to add a little variation to where they are. So I can just grab a few of these in the middle and just push them up. I want to create kind of a peak here in the middle just to give this a little more variety. Make it feel like it's a little more. We can unsolo that. And all our lines will follow those new point positions. Good. All right, let's move on. I'm going to create another circle object now by clicking on the lips tool and then double clicking on it to create a shape that's perfectly centered in our comp. Then I'll uncheck this size link button and set this to uh, 40 by 40. This time I'm going to turn off the fill and just make this a medium gray color for the stroke. Alright, we'll call this circle 1. And I'm going to duplicate out a few copies of this, but I only want them to be positioned uh, where these two, where these three lines intersect. So we've only got like every fourth point here where the two lines are coming together. But I think the easiest way for me to do that would be to just, we'll just go ahead and duplicate out a grid. Same number we had before. And then I'm going to open up this panel here and let's grab our circles and move them just above our points here. Our yellow points. Then I'm going to grab all of these layers, our circles and our points. Knowing that I have the exact same number in each, I can go into the timeline tools here on my anti-static toolbox and go into the label mate. We're going to parent the blue to yellow and hit this reposition button. And then when we click that up, all those circles are going to be positioned and parented to the points below them. Now I'm going to select this label group just going to solo that group and then I'm just going to I'm going to delete in between every fourth circle here. So we'll grab those three, delete these three right down the line. And it should work out perfectly. Now I can unsolo that. Let's grab these circles again and open up the properties. I'm going to open up the stroke and command or control click on the color and then go into our utilities and add a palette manager. So I can change the color of all these circles. I'm just going to give them a bit of a color palette here. All right, I've added five colors, so I'm just going to change the color count to five. And then it's going to randomly choose a color from our color palette. All right, now we want to add some text. Let's go into our utilities and create some text variables. I'm going to make this an uppercase, lower, lower. And let's duplicate out 41 of these. And it's going to run through and create each of those points for us. And now I can see that they're way too big, so I'm just going to grab each of these. Let's change the label color so I can select them easier later on. Let's set the size to 10. And I'm going to set the opacity down to 40. All right, now let's open this up again. I'm going to bring all these down once more to just above our points because we're going to parent each of these to the points. So if I select all our fuchsia and all our yellow layers, we can go into the timeline tools and the label mate again. And this time, 
fuchsia to yellow and reposition. Now they're kind of hidden, so I'm just going to grab these fuchsia layers and bring them up 20 pixels or so, just so we can see them again. Now that's looking good, but I want to make these text boxes that are linked to the circle points a little more prominent. So we'll just grab this label group. Again, zebra deselect. And now I just have those ones selected. I'll open up the opacity, turn these back up to 100, and we'll bump them up a few points as well. Okay, looking nice. All right, let's create another chart. I'm going to double click on the circle. This time, let's make a really small point, uh, 10 by 10. And I'm going to call this point B1. And I will duplicate out a grid. Oh, nope, I forgot to do something. Let's undo that. Click on the position and make sure we separate these dimensions as well. Then hit the Duplicate Grid button. Now if I select all those points, and we're going to do the same thing as before. Command or Control, click on Y position and create a new Wiggle Manager. So now these ones are going to wiggle separately from the first set. I'm going to grab these new points that we created and we should change the label color. All right, I'm going to select this new group and let's just drag these down a little bit. Now just like before, I'm going to select this label group. Now I'm just going to solo these because just like before, I want to just reposition some of these just to create a little more interest. Now let's grab them again, unsolo that, and we'll go into our utilities and make a new stringer object. And I'm just going to change the opacity of this down to 50. All right, I'm going to select all these points again, go into the timeline and zebra deselect. And then let's create one more stringer object. Make sure it's set to Bezier. Let that do its thing. Then I'm going to grab all of our intangents and just move those over a little bit. Now we're going to have a nice curvy line. The bottom of our points should be our new stringer object. And let's make this one a brighter color, maybe like that. Maybe I'll make that a little bit smaller, though. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to create a background for this graph by just creating a new solid. And we'll make it 1900 by 600. And we can call this grid. That's approximately the size I want for our background. Let's just bring it all the way down to the bottom and add a grid effect. I'm going to squeeze this in a little bit because I want it to just fit the size of our grid. Now this by default is already fitting our points perfectly. Uh, I couldn't have planned that better. Let's turn the border down to 1 and you can play with the anchor point here, the Y position, to just make these a little bigger or smaller depending on what you want. Okay, that's going to be good for me. I'm going to drop the opacity down. And then you know what? I think I want to make a little bit more of a background here where I kind of zebra stripe these columns. So let's cr click on the rectangle tool. We'll double click and create a rectangle that is, uh, let's see, it's I know the grid here is 45 between these columns, so 45 times 4. I'm not good at math, so I'm just going to type that in there and then make this 600. Yeah. Let's set this a solid color and turn off the stroke. Make this uh, white. Or I'll go with a darker color. And then we'll just go to our canvas tools and create another grid. This time we don't want 41 of them. We only want uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
five columns, and this is going to be 180 times 2, 360. I can do math. All right, let's grab these backgrounds and just move them over here. You can zoom in to get this just right. Good. Now I'll push these all the way down to the bottom, which is a long journey. And then turn down the opacity. Just something subtle. That's pretty nice. Okay, one more thing I'm going to do. I'm going to add maybe kind of a highlight point to one of these bits of data. Maybe it's causing some trouble. So I'm going to create another square here and make this one maybe 50 by 50. And we're going to set the stroke to solid and change that to red. And turn off the fill. And let's turn up the width maybe to 3 pixels. And then maybe I'm going to pick on, let's get this point right here. Let's find out what that is. Go down to our points here. That's one of our circles, and it's parented to 0.25. So if I grab this, I'm just going to hold down Shift and find 0.25 in our list here. And when I click that, it should be parented and repositioned to that layer. So it's going to follow it. Uh, you know what? I'll bring this below our text greebles, though. And then I just want to add a little bit of a flash to this. So I'm going to create an opacity keyframe right at the beginning, move forward about five frames, and change the opacity to 20. Then if I grab those two points, go into our timeline tools, and hit loop keyframes. And then it'll just cycle back and forth between those two. All right, let's take a look. All right, that's looking pretty good. One more thing I want to do, though. I don't want to have both of these charts moving at exactly the same time, so I'm just going to open this back up. Let's find our Wiggle Manager 2. That's going to be the one that controls the bottom grid here. Maybe we'll turn this up and turn down the Wiggle position so it's just smaller, but it goes faster. Okay, good. And then I also want to I'm going to go into this point B here open up the position and add one line to our wiggle manager. I'm just going to go at the very top, put in posterize time, and set this to maybe 4. And then if I right click on that Y position and choose copy expression only, now I've copied that expression, I can select this label group and just hit command V to paste so that expression with the new posterize time command will be pasted onto all those layers. And now if I hit this, only four times per second will it be calculating the new position of these. So it just gives it a little bit more of a staggered look, like the data takes a second to come in. All right, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed making charts and graphs together, and I'll see you next time.